This Week in Gaming will be highlighting the top games launching this month. The ESRB is talking loot crates. Then we'll shine a spotlight on a never-released N64 game. Then we'll jump right into our quickies. Obviously. And then I'll show you what I've been playing in VR. All this and more coming up, so stick around. It's a brand new month, and with it comes brand new video game titles that'll surely squeeze you where it hurts. The wallet. Here's a look at what's coming out in March. A Way Out has many hoping for a fresh breath of air in the realm of video games. It's a story-driven, mandatory split-screen co-op. That's right, in order to play this game, you're going to need someone else to do so. A Way Out will be out March 27th for PC, Xbox One, and PS4. Hey Paxton, what is a pirate's favorite letter? Oh, I know this one. R. Close, it's actually the C, as in Sea of Thieves, which is coming out on Xbox One and PC March 20th. Grab your boomstick and your compass, learn the difference between port and starboard, put the wind at your back, and get ready to grab some booty. I was able to play the closed beta with my cousin, and this game has a lot going for it. Like many battle royale games, Sea of Thieves dips between slow exploration and high intensity battles with other players. Finally, PlayStation has a great looking VR game. Bravo Team is what everyone thought of playing when virtual reality first made a splash. Play as a member of an advanced tactical unit as you run for cover while shooting down your enemies. The game will be playable with the PSVR aim controller. Plus, it'll also support a two-player co-op mode. We'll definitely be playing Bravo Team when it comes out March 7th. Oh, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. And the last March game on our radar is... Far Cry 5! Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, no sh The newest installment in the series takes place in the good old US of A. Hope County, Montana, to be more precise. Yeehaw! Players can team up with a buddy for full-on co-op and enjoy all the simple pleasures the countryside has to offer, like fishing, hunting, joyriding, oh, and killing lots and lots of crazy cult members! Ha! All this fun will be available March 27th on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. While those are the games coming up, Montgomery is going to talk about Call of Duty World War II Zombies! I am? Oh, I am! That's right! This new zombie map just came out on Xbox One and PC, so here's what you need to know. Nazi zombies are spreading faster than glitter! The Darkest Shore is the latest zombie map for Call of Duty World War II, and it just released for the Xbox One and PC. Here are a few starting tips. There's a new weapon, the Ripsaw. This crude killing machine will require several steps to reach its full potential. Gather the two parts, the handle and the blade, then assemble it near the U-boat area. After that, use zombie spines and soles to charge it. Once it's fully complete, you'll be able to shoot frickin' saw blades that'll cut hordes of undead Nazis in two. The fog means two things. You can't see shit, and the moistla is prowling for you. This forearm twisted creation is tough to put down and can wreak havoc on your health with just one hit. Best to team up and throw everything you got at it. And, I don't have to tell you this, but aim for the head. Last thing you'll need to know, how to activate the Pack-A-Punch. This upgrading machine will require the following steps. Flip two power switches, one in the U-boat area and one in the artillery bunker. Then take a fun ride on the minecarts. Three trips will get you the three power cells required to lift the elevator, which has the Pack-A-Punch. Pro tip, this is the best place to make a stand. No zombies can spawn behind you. And if you get past all of that, Good luck with the burning floors and figuring out how to turn them off. Next up, video games are under the microscope of some politicians. Rhode Island State Senator has proposed putting a 10% tax increase on games with an ESRB rating of M or higher. The senator, as reported by GameIndustry.biz, says the purpose of this tax is twofold. The higher prices will deter parents from buying mature games for their kids and the extra tax dollars will go towards mental health and counseling for schools. Okay, A, this senator is using games as a scapegoat for today's problems, and B, this will never hold up in court. In other news, those controversial loot boxes are now getting more attention, and possibly some action taken against them. While we reported last month that Hawaii was looking into labeling games with loot crates, the Entertainment Software Rating Board went a step further and announced it'll do just that. Nationwide. Oh my. Yeah. Along with its letter rating system, the ESRB will soon label games with in-game purchases. This will help parents know that if they get these games for their kids, they should probably lock up their credit cards too. Now it's time for Paxson to tell you about something we found pretty cool in our segment we like to call Spotlight. Guess what's back and better than ever? 
No, not Red Dead Redemption. It's coming later. Calm down. We're talking about 40 Winks. It's a Nintendo 64 platformer that was canceled way back in 1998 by the original publisher, GT Interactive, but has now risen from the dead. Or maybe just a deep, deep sleep. The goal of the game is to collect all 40 Winks and to stop the evil Nightcap. You play as Rough and Tumble, a brother and sister duo, who are caught between fantasies and nightmares. But be careful! You don't want the Winks to turn into Hoodwinks, cause that means nightmares for all the children. <gasps> oh no! Now, 40 Winks did actually make it to the original PlayStation console, but the Nintendo 64 port didn't have the same luck. But have no fear! Pico Interactive is here! The company develops and produces new games for old consoles and started a fundraiser to make 40 Winks a reality for the N64. There are 11 days left in the Kickstarter campaign, and the project is already fully funded with over $100,000 and 1,321 backers. Montgomery! What? We almost forgot what time it is! What time is it? It's time for the Quickies! Outlast was released on Nintendo Switch. And Justice 2 announced a legendary edition that'll launch March 27th. It will include the game and all DLCs. Horizon Zero Dawn bragged just a little that it has sold over 7.5 million copies so far. Modders from Road to Liberty have been working hard on a Fallout 3 mod within Fallout 4. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Epic Games teased a jetpack for its Battle Royale game, but instead gave us a hunting rival. Apparently the jetpack will be out next update. Apparently. <sighs> Metal Gear Survive did not have a strong launch. Ooh, this could be due to lackey servers, the extra cost to create a second character, or the fact that there's no Kojima. That's, that's probably right. Uh, the 1995 Chrono Trigger is now out on Steam with enhanced graphics and sound. But be careful, there are numerous reports about crappy port controls. WWE and Rocket League have become partners. Oh yeah! yeah. PUBG has reset their leaderboard, so that 800 meter kill doesn't count anymore, Jerry. That wraps up the news this week, but Paxson here tried out Gorn VR. She had a bloody good time, right Paxson? It was definitely bloody. Here are some of my highlights. Oh! Tight! Oh! I think I killed- Oh, that was- uh, I don't do blood well. No shot. This is unrealistic. You're not coming back from that. Oh man, that was pretty tough. Uh, but how are the controls? They look kind of wonky. It was wonky just because it's just, it's different moving around in that type of VR game. You almost have to like swim on land to try to move <laughs> back and forth. And then you're also holding the weapon. And so it's like swimming and moving and swinging all at once. But after that, it's. He's cake. <laughs> sounds, sounds easy. Sounds He's easy. cake. That's yeah. on Steam. It is. It is on Steam. It is $20. I would recommend it, especially with the new update. I think it's pretty cool. I thought it was a lot of fun. The graphics are kind of cheesy, which makes it entertaining for me. I, I like games like that. It's scary. Ah, I wouldn't use the term scary, and they walk with their knees all shaking and everything. <laughs> but other than that, it was very entertaining to be in that game. So I would definitely recommend it. If you want to see my full playthrough, be sure to check out Rated Red Gaming's YouTube channel on Monday. Monday, Monday, coming mm -hmm. out. All right, that wraps up our first full episode of the Rated Red Gaming Show. Let us know in the comments what you think. We hope you enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun doing this. We love to see your feedback, good or bad. Yes, I know, even when they send hate messages. It's it's... The, leave the all caps off, please. Just, just punctuate, normal, please. But be sure to subscribe to Rated Red Gaming's YouTube channel because we're awesome, and we want you to keep coming back, even if you do hate us. Paxson thinks I'm awesome. <sighs> I'm Paxson Elrod. I'm gonna give her a breath. <laughs>